The Adventures of the Saint, starring Vincent Price. <laughs> Characters created by Leslie Charterman and known to millions from books, magazines, and motion pictures. The Robin Hood of modern crime now comes to radio, starring Hollywood's brilliant and talented actor Vincent Price as The Saint. Waiter. Yes, monsieur. Uh, waiter, will you tell the chef of this unhappy restaurant that he'd make a better shoemaker? Monsieur, uh... Shoemaker? Look at this miserable concoction. It's called a salad. But, monsieur, Don't but me. But, monsieur, I have something to tell you. Yes? Someone is waiting for you at another table. Well, get back to him at once. Warn him against eating anything in this establishment. Tell him his life is in danger. Mr. Tenter, there is something strange about the gentleman. I think he has a gun in his pocket. Aha. Uh-huh. <laughs> More severe critic of food than I am. Well, tell the chef he'd better flee for his life. Oh, do you wish to see him? The chef? No, he'll have to look out for himself. Not the chef, monsieur. The little man. Hmm. He is little, isn't he? Yes, sir, but desperate air about it. Well, I'll go see him. Uh, how do you do? You wish to see me? Uh, uh, Mr. Temper, my name is Potts. Uh, how do you do? I, I need help. I'm the senior partner of Potts and Carter, jewelers extraordinary. Extraordinary. Earlier this evening, Mr. Carter was killed. Oh, too bad. Mr. Templer, it wasn't an accident. Oh? He was murdered. Oh, I see. And the police are picking you for Queen of the May. And you want me to prove you didn't murder Carter? Oh, no, Mr. Templer. No? No. I want you to prove I did. It's no use, Mr. Templer. I did kill Carter. Well, why wouldn't the police believe you? Because they couldn't find the corpse. Well, there's usually one around after a murder, you know. Somebody stole this one. Uh, dealing corpses is a rather restricted profession. Where did you kill your partner? In our establishment on Wiltshire Boulevard. Oh, that's a nice place for it. Uh, when? Earlier this evening. And then you phoned the police from the shop? No, I... I couldn't bear the sight of Carter's body. I walked over to a nearby hotel and made my call from there. And then? I returned to the shop. I didn't go into the back. To where the shooting had taken place? Yes. I waited for the police. They arrived. I told them what had happened and let them into the back. But when you got there, the cupboard was there? Yes, Mr. Templer. No one had heard the shot? No. You see, it's a business neighborhood. It was evening. That's understandable. And... May I ask you a question, Mr. Pye? Of course. Are you tired of living? Right. Oh, oh, oh you mean, why am I so anxious to have the police believe me? Yes. Because I shot Carter in self-defense. He's a larger man than I am. He was threatening me with physical violence. I acted only in self-defense. Oh, I see. Well, I'll drop you at your home, and, uh, Mr. Potts, you've got a job. Yes? You've got to find your partner's body. But I... Now, ask yourself where you'd go if you were... <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he wouldn't be going anywhere himself. You better spend some time thinking about your friends. One of them might have removed the corpse in order to shield you. Or think of your enemies. Are you married? Yes, I am. Uh, well, anyway, an enemy of yours might have moved the body to make the killing look like... Well, like premeditated murder. One way or another, Mr. Potts, you've quite a bit to think about, haven't you? Mr. Templer? Hmm? Or are you, uh... I'm Carter. Carter. Carter? Yes. Of Pops and Carter? Of Pops and Carter. Oh, one of us is in a bad way. Either you're dead or I'm crazy. I can assure you I'm not dead. Oh, very well. I'll see a psychiatrist in the morning. Tonight I'm sleepy. What did Pops want with you? Hey, you've been haunting me, haven't you? I've been following Pops. What did he want? Oh, nothing really. He merely wanted to assure me that he killed you. He what? Killed you. Shot you to amplify an already unbelievable remark. He said that? He must be insane. Well, eccentric, anyway. Uh, Mr. Carter, the situation is rather bizarre. A man confesses to a murder. The police do not believe him. He comes to me and asks me to prove him a murderer. I leave him and find myself confronting the man he claims to have murdered. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> now, perhaps it's not intended to. What do you mean? I suggest you go to the police, identify yourself to them, and ask complete protection for yourself. I don't need any protection. Pots wouldn't harm a fly. Yeah, but you're not a fly. 
My dear fellow, the possibility of Potts really doing me harm is something I can't take seriously. Why not go to the police anyway? I couldn't without exposing Potts to ridicule and... Your solicitude for your partner is rather touching, especially since he accused you of being a thief, of uh, stealing from the firm, to be precise. He said that? Yes. Then I have something to think about. You have something to fear? Nonsense. No. Now, a man has already confessed to your murder and you're still alive. His confession may have been moonstruck madness, or it may have been uh, prophecy. Good night, Mr. Carter. they put out nowadays have rare and wonderful gadgets attached to... Uh, pardon me, but I'm trailing a fellow. Who? A man named Carter. Do you know him? Mm-hmm. Do I know you, or should I? What do you think? Uh, Carter's cab is well in sight. Uh, just a moment. I'll take my eyes off the cab for a moment, and... Uh, yes, I should. What's your name? <laughs> yeah. I'm Simon. Mm. <laughs> you know, I only bought this car yesterday. Are you part of the standard equipment? No, I go with the deluxe models only. Well, I'm so glad I paid for the extras. Uh, Care what? It doesn't matter. Depends on where we're going or what we do when we get there. This is a nice, quiet street. Hey, hey, wait a minute. That's the ignition key. I know. Look, you've got the key. Mm -hmm. Well, may I borrow, eh? No. Uh Uh No, Carter's cab is out of sight. You're cute. This is as far as we're going. And now, Simon, what are we going to do? Hey, I beg your pardon. Oh, oh, hello, officer. Now, this may be a residential neighborhood, but it is. It is. But that doesn't mean you should play house here. Well, we weren't exactly playing house, officer. I was trying to persuade the lady to return my ignition key to me. Is that a fact? Lady, give him back his ignition key. All right, officer. Here you are, son. Thank you. Now, you take that ignition key and stick it in the lock. Uh That's right. Now, you turn it. Oh, you're doing very nicely. Now you push the little button over there. Uh, this one? Yeah. Oh, charming. Now you shift the gear into first. You release the handbrake. Now you're a bright boy. The next time you go out with a girl, make sure your ignition key isn't showing. Now step on the gas and get the heck out of here. <laughs> Are you angry with me? For delaying me? Mm, not especially. Where are you taking me? To a jewelry store. Oh, you really shouldn't. You don't know me well enough. Mm-hmm. Which jewelry store is I? Uh, Potts and Carter. You know the place? I should. Sure. My husband owns half of it. Oh. Uh, Potts or Carter? Potts. Mm. They must have a nice assortment of stones. What makes you think so? Potts doesn't bat in your late baby. Not in his own merit. Well, I'm not so sure that's a compliment. Brood about it, huh? Because, um... Right. Hey, there's a light in the back. Are you coming with me? No. Oh, why not? You think your hubby might be there? I'm brooding. All right. Just don't hatch anything. Who? Who's there? Open the door. Who? Okay, okay. Temper. Now, how right you are, Mr. Carter. What do you want? Let's go inside. I, think... I said inside. Well... Come in. But... I know. You weren't expecting company. The house is a mess. What made you think I'd be here? I wasn't sure, but it was a possibility, so I came. Now that you're here... I'd like to take a look in that back room where the light is. Where the light? And I rather suspect the vault. Templar, I don't have to stand for this. No, but I've got a feeling you're going to. Let's get on with it, shall we? I, uh... I was checking stuff. Then let's both check. Wait a minute. You mightn't understand. Give me a chance to first, huh? I don't want you to come in Keep here. Keep walking. All right, all right. But... Well, you idiot, if you think that by putting the lights out, you... Uh, cut it! Carter! Simon! 
clear. I heard the shots. I came up to Simon Weir. The light switch is near the back door. I got it. Oh, quiet now. <gasps> Simon, your feet. Lying half across the doorway, Mr. Carter. His eyes are open. Simon, they're open. <laughs> Dead. There's blood leaking out from under him. Let's take a look at the back room. Uh-huh. Yeah, back window leading to an alley. Not so much for that. Now, the vault's open. Somehow, how can you worry about that when the man's I've dead? I've seen dead men before. The vault's empty. I don't care. Your husband might. The police certainly would. Well, i got to go. Oh, but you can't leave me. You've got a job notifying the police. They wouldn't like it if you didn't. What are you going to do? Uh, where do you live? Bell Tower Drive. What number? 39. All right. Dial operator, ask for police headquarters, tell them all. Me, I'm going to visit with a man who confessed to a murder before it was committed. Curious to see whether he's going to stick to that confession now that the murder is a murder. I want to see Mr. Potts. At this hour? Yes, I'm peculiar. I want to see Mr. Potts at this hour. I'm sorry, but... A bureaucrat. Good heavens, sir. You pushed me aside. Tonight you win the badge for alertness. Now shut the door. Yes, sir. Where's Potts? I refuse to... You're not the usual butler. You're young, big, and you look as if you've got muscles. Yet you let me push you aside as if you were a doddering old man. Why? My father was a butler before me, sir and his father before him. We're accustomed to dealing with gentlemen, sir. Mm, must be quite a come down talking to me. Where's Park? He's not at home, sir. You sure? Quite, sir. Let's go look for him as though we didn't know he was out. But I assure no. you, sir, that he... Show me. Not in the house. No, sir. Uh, don't look so smug. Mrs. Potts isn't in the house either. You knew that, sir, before you looked. Tell me, um, how does she feel about her husband? I beg your pardon. All right, all right. You've given me the proper outraged response. What's your name? Anderson, sir. Anderson, make a speech. Sure. Uh, I... <laughs> uh, well, my father... And was... his father before him. And I'll bet you they all knew exactly what cooked with the master and mistress. So do you what cook? Well... Mr. Potts is a very fine man. Mrs. Potts is a, a very, very fine, fine woman. woman. And you take the high road, and I'll take the low road. Hey, company's coming. <laughs> I will take the low road. Butler, who am I? I don't know, sir. Good. Then tell the police all about me when they arrive. And they'll be here soon. It'll give them something to think about besides Mrs. Potts. And, uh, Anderson? Yes, sir? You think about something besides Mrs. Potts, too. Something like, uh, murder, hmm? Good afternoon, sir. Oh, it's yes, only Simon. Sir. Hello, Simon. Uh, business as usual here at Potts and Carter, hmm? Yes, usual enough, I suppose, with Carter lying in the morgue and my husband. Where? Nobody knows. Police looking for him? Yes. Warrant out for him? No, of course not. Then whom have they in mind for Carter's murder? A burglar. It's obvious what happened last night. Someone was burgling the vault. Carter surprised him. The burglar shot Carter. It's a theory with a great many pleasant aspects. <laughs> it doesn't explain your husband's confession, though. Well, he was overworked. He was tired. He didn't know what he was saying. Police are afraid that maybe... Maybe he lost his mind or something. Yeah, I like that or something better. The theory doesn't explain your husband's accusations against Carter... Accusations of theft. Simon, I don't know anything about all this. Then why you're acting the car last night? I was worried about my husband, about Carter. And then I... I've always wanted to meet you. Oh. <laughs> why? Well, it's not the kind of thing I can talk about coldly like this. Well, we must discuss it warmly. <laughs> Some other time. Right now, what about Anderson, your butler? Anderson? I don't trust him. I know it's not done this year, mistrusting butlers, but I have a feeling he knows more than he should. More than he should about what? Uh, why don't you find out? What? How could I? By discussing things with him, warmly. 
I'm not so sure I'd like that. <laughs> I'm not making friends today. Just influencing people. I can't imagine what Anderson would or wouldn't know. Stimulate your imagination by going out to the house now and working on him. You really think it's important? Very important. Now run along. Well, all right, but the shop... I'll lock up. You go on. Well, I'll see you later. Mm, I'll be at home. Stirring up the furnace. I mean, you don't have to have a furnace. Be warm. <laughs> Well, first the back door. Mm -hmm. Locked. And now the front door. Locked. Now? Hey. Yes? Hey, Sal. Yes? That's your heap over there? Uh, yeah. Yes, it is. Better take a care. I like my heap. Now, don't look now, but some low characters let the air out a couple of your tires. Oh. Well, then, suppose we go for a ride in your cab. Uh, 39 Bell Tower Drive. Hmm? Okay. Say, did you happen to notice the happy prankster who deflated my tire? Sure, I noticed her. Why not? I'm under 80. Oh. Oh, well, why didn't you stop her? Mister, I'm a married man. That means I'm cautious. For all I knew, maybe you're the kind of fellow likes a girl to deflate his tires for him. It depends on the circumstances, Cabby. Not so early in the morning. Okay. Next time I'll know you don't like a girl to deflate your tires for you in the morning. You don't think it's fun? No, I think it's murder. Thirty-nine Bell Tower Drive up ahead. Okay, pull over here. Okay. Nice right, stop. What I should wait for you? Mm, we'll both wait. For somebody to get to the house? No, for someone to leave it. Hey, hey, mister. Yeah? There's a guy leaving the house now, getting into a car. Good. Sanderson, follow the car. Okay. Not too close, huh? Uh, not too close. There he goes. Well, we go, too. Hope he ain't going on no long trip. I ain't got too much gas in the tank. Well, he's going on a very long trip, and yet I don't think he's going far. Huh? Now, space is relative, Cabby. Remember what Hamlet said? Well, I, I wasn't around at the time. I could be bounded by a nutshell, yet count myself king of infinite space. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember it now. Were it not that I have bad dreams? Nice guy, Hamlet. I wonder. I wonder, does Anderson have bad dreams? <laughs> getting dark. I, I don't like these hills when it starts getting dark. Mm, they're bad. Yeah, and they're steep. Hey, hey, the guy we're trailing is turning off the road. Drive it, driveway. Pull up to it and stop. Okay. Mm. The house is beyond the bend. Quite near the road. Cabby. Yeah? I'm leaving you. Look, I want you to drive back to town. The instant you hit a place with a phone, call the police. Yeah, and tell them what? To warm a cell for a murderer. They can pick the murderer up here. Okay, pal. Uh, but don't do nothing rash. Hmm. Oh, uh, oh. Oh, hello, Anderson. Fancy finding me here, hmm? Temp, Mr. Templer, whatever would your grandfather say? What do you want? I'm admiring the country home of the Potts. By the way, where is Mr. Potts? I don't know. Oh, who's that, a big friend? Stay away from that door. Nonsense. It looks like a charming door. Works, too. Oh. Mr. Potts, tied and gagged. I told you to stay away I from I don't it. accept advice graciously, nor do I care for large... With lantern jaws. But lantern jaws are handy to hit. Now for you, Mr. Potts. We'll get the gag out of your mouth. There. You feel better? Oh, uh, don't rush it. Your hands. Hmm. Nice stuff. Hmm. Quiet. Look out behind you. Oh. Oh, well, hello, Claire. Hello. So glad you dropped in. You are? Yes. Remember I warned you about your butler? It was he who brought your husband here, tied him up, etc. That's interesting. Uh, you should ask me why I suspected him. Oh, all right, I'll tell you. When I visited your house and met Anderson for the first time, we had a little chat, in the course of which he remarked that I knew you weren't in the house before I searched it. Why? 
Because how did he know I'd seen you outside the house unless... Unless what? Uh, uh, let me help you to your feet, Mr. Barnes. I, I can't move. Uh, standing up will help restore the circulation. Unless what, Mr. Oh, Templer? Oh, touch, touch. So formal, Mr. Templer. Unless, Claire, you told him. Oh. Why should I have told him that? Obviously, because you and he were in on this little plot together. Plot? To kill Carter and frame your husband for the murder. Thus, you would inherit the business. And the butler. You're charming. Simon, but fantastically wrong. You're implying Anderson killed Carter. No, no. He'll go to the gas chamber as accessory. To whom? To you. That's silly. Carter was shot from the back room. I was out front with you. You were at the front door, that's true. Carter was shot as we as he was going into the back room. His back, therefore, was to us. And yet, if you remember, he was shot in the back. Afterwards, we remarked how he lay face upward with the blood coming out from underneath him. You aren't a fool, are you? Oh, dear. I was wondering how long it would be before you produced the pistol. Mr. Potts, can you stand alone? I, I can't. I'm falling. Oh, then fall in your way. Oh, right. oh, 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 oh. All right. Mrs. Potts, your gun, if you please. Thank you. Oh, that's a good deal better. The police will be here shortly, and that will be that. Oh, relax, Mr. Potts. You've fallen to rise again, but your wife, I'm afraid, has deflated her last tire. <laughs> In good health. Mr. Templer, how could I have killed Carter and not killed him? Simplicity itself, Mr. Potts. Your gun had been carefully loaded with blanks. Carter pretended to be dead. But why should he have done that? Your wife must have persuaded him that by doing that, he would escape going to jail for theft. And she'd have a hold over oh, you. Oh, she's not a very nice woman, is she? Mm, no. With uh, Carter murdered, she was preparing to have you disappear permanently. It would seem to the police that you'd killed Carter and fled to the country. Oh, I can't thank no, you. don't bother. It was fun. But in the future, Mr. Potts, before you confess to murdering anyone, be sure you murder him. You have been listening to another adventure of the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime. And now here is our star, Vincent Price. Ladies and gentlemen, freedom is everybody's job. The Bill of Rights established our freedom and protects it. But freedom demands that each of us carry out our duties as a citizen, to vote in an informed way so that the best man is placed in public office, to serve on juries, to take an active interest in public issues. Remember, by making our form of government work better here, we strengthen democracy everywhere. This is Vincent Price inviting you to join us again next week at the same time for another exciting adventure of the saint. Good night.